Blackwood, who's the main bad guy, uses illusions to play illusions, Gracie, um, to play on people's fear of the supernatural. How can we know that we are not simply being paranoid about our conclusions with what we've been talking about with, with cults and, and, and different stuff? For instance, uh, the movie Nine being satanic. How do we know that we're not just being paranoid in that stuff? Okay. So what if? Yeah. So what if two different Christians though feel differently about it, and they're both like, I'm not saying like one's a bad Christian. I'm saying they're both, you know, they're both good Christians, you know. Well, I, I think there's always a good Christian. <laughs> you, you know what I mean, though. Like, for instance, let's say you and Jack. You feel like um, it is an immoral thing, and he feels like it is not an immoral thing. How do you know that? You're not the one being paranoid. Because maybe there's something about it that I personally struggle with in my life. Okay. I got you. Anybody else have something? Check the facts. Okay. Sure, like someone checks the facts and he proves them to be... Um, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God! It be false, you know. And so, uh, if we check the facts and do history on what we're um, suspicious of, then we'll be able to find out: is it just suspicion, or is it just? Um, okay, and Zachy, you had your hand up. Well, I was the crazy that if you can explain, it's I guess. It would be uh, explainable, and be, uh, then it's not paranoia. Okay. I'm going to take this a little bit farther. Um, where is a line between conspiracy theories and being naive about something? Since conspiracy by nature hides evidence. And I'll give you some, exa some specific examples of conspiracy theories. And some things might not be conspiracy theories, but just try to. Okay, the, okay. There, there's there's an example of a conspiracy theory. Hitler, also another version of this, is, is all of us did not really die. Um, where is the line between what constitutes a conspiracy theory and what's just you being naive? But history can be, but history can be hidden by the victor, right? Technically speaking, because when somebody wins, they can they can write whatever history they say is true, right? Technically speaking. Yeah, but at this point, there's so many eyewitnesses that. Of, of which one are we talking about? Conspiracy theories in general, or? <laughs> You you might have been onto something. I just didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> okay, say so something happens today, and I try to cover it up and write that something else happened. Mm -hmm. Well, all of you here is able to see it, and there are witnesses to the fact that what I actually wrote. Was okay, so let's let's build on this and use something that that. Okay, all right. Let, let, let's build something a little more concrete from this. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, there's somebody running for president. Her name's Hillary Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I don't know if you guys will pay attention to the news or not. And there were some things that she did that were awfully sketchy, but the FBI cleared her and ha has not has not persecuted or charged her for anything. So 
how do Hillary Clinton fans know that that she actually did some, do something wrong if the FBI themselves had said that she didn't do anything worthy of prosecuting? Because just because she didn't do anything worthy of prosecuting doesn't mean she didn't do yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, ways. but you're being a little bit on the safe side. Come on, delve in there, guys. Come on. <laughs> There's always going to be somebody behind the scenes. Right, but but back to the going back to the question though, how do you know that? It's going to be conspiracy theory. It, it, it's it's covered up if that is true. So how do we know that it's true? I got a feeling. But that kind of goes against what Gra Gracie was saying about fact and and and, and leaning on, on on fact of what you know. Sometimes you might have to go with your instinct. Well, but that could be said for the opposite too. What if Hitler was going with his instinct that the Jews <laughs> needed to be killed? Huh? See what I mean? <laughs> 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 See what I mean? Like that could go either way. So how do we know if something's just a conspiracy theory? See what I mean? Or if and it has some. have to get to the root. Who told us that the emails were being covered up? I didn't mention the emails. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I did not mention the emails. I'm just saying it. <laughs> <laughs> now I have not said anything for or against Hillary Clinton in this lesson. <laughs> Had I, it would have been a lot more violent than what I had said. <laughs> you want, they were talking about um, the Russian connection with Trump and all that. Okay. Uh, that to help uh, Trump win over to get pre uh, to be president. Uh huh. That there's going on with the, the Russian. Okay. So that, okay. So so and 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 how do we distinguish what is a conspiracy theory from what is? See what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are being awful quiet. Well, I think it has. Like I was saying, I think it, we have to go back to the original person that said it, and or people that said it. And uh, are they trustworthy? Are they someone that reveals facts, or are they someone that reveals gossip? Okay, well, facts? let's use that, but let's use the Hillary Clinton examples just because it's so recent. Um, how would you go about doing that with the case of Hillary Clinton? I don't have enough power to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I would need to know powerful people to... So how do you know that Hillary Clinton isn't out? genuinely... Innocent. She was it was, she, she was she proved to be, it was proved to be done. Which parts? All of it? All the conspiracy theories or just certain spots? <laughs> well, no, I'm just having a microphone saying he does this so I'm just trying to get you guys to think about the question. It's not about Hillary Clinton. I, I don't care about Hillary Clinton. It's about the question, where is the line between conspiracy theory and night? How about if the facts that support the con conspiracy are greater than the facts that don't support the conspiracy? Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring and up some examples. And compare the facts side by side, and, you know, that's when we kind of have to use our sensibility of, what's more likely. Okay, so I'm going to bring up some examples of conspiracy theories that, I mean, don't really have much um, concreteness to them, and um, just kind of see how, how we interact with those, those ones too. But before we go to that, any other comments? Please use the office as I tried to stay away from those ones. <laughs> I did. I really did. <laughs> So there's nothing before I move on? Okay. So um, one would be about, since we talked about it a couple weeks ago, it was about the Ouija boards. Um, some people would say, oh, well, there's not really anything demonic there. You, you can't prove that the demons can actually manifest a thing, just people or animals. Okay, you know, I see where you're coming from on that. Um, and so then, then other people would say, well, you can't even prove the demons do exist. So this would be an example of what what could be considered in pop culture, at least, to be a um, conspiracy theory. How do you guys think about that? So we have to approach this like according to 
pop culture or spiritually? Sure, either or. Okay, because obviously a Ouija board is specifically intended to communicate with the dead, which the Bible specifically speaks against. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. So from a spiritual stance, standpoint, it's pretty obvious. Now let's switch to the pop culture. Well, well, that's a hard one because people think that it's harmless. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's like half, four, and half against. Well, how do you know it's not going to be like 44 and 60? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Zach. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Here's another one that, that I met, that um, I heard a little while back, and don't laugh. <laughs> President Obama is an alien. No, just, just, just hear me out. Like, what if, though? Because that is stupid. I'm sorry. And whoever thought of this, they are crazy. They are crazy. Okay. Because they think that the president... But seriously, let's try to approach this from a serious <laughs> from a serious standpoint. Let's try. Because any logical person would say... Serena, hold on. Hold on. Nicole, I... don't believe in out there. No, that is a good point. A lot of people, crazy people, I mean, people with opinions, do believe in aliens, okay? I know. I was going to say, is Area 51 one of your conspiracy theories? It's a huge one. Ben, what, would you have anything to say about this there, Benny Buddy Boy? <laughs> no? I'll tell you what I tell you, Kyle, mostly. Jesus didn't make aliens. God didn't make aliens. The Bible doesn't ever say that on the eighth day, God created aliens. Fine, but if I ever do see meet a real life alien, I'm gonna tell them Serena said you can't exist. Nicole, do you have anything to say to this? My mind is blank today. She's she's just sitting there thinking, I believe in aliens. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Nicole. Now, aliens. Uh, me too. Mostly when I was sleeping, but still. <laughs> just I'm just kidding, Nicole. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, I mean, there, there's another example of, of a conspiracy theory that actually does have a following. I'm, I'm a little surprised about this one, but I mean, there is a following of this. It's like, okay. Um, that doesn't, you can't really prove or disprove. I mean, on one hand, you can because you can say, well, no, he's got the body of a human, and you can do, a, do, do like scans on his body, and it's a human body. And then they'd say, no, because they're, they're hiding the, the real x-rays from you. Or they would go something like this. <laughs> they're not visible with the human eye. Or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, I'm sorry. He was <laughs> in area that That's it! It says DNA that differs from ours. <laughs> she is an alien, but not of Kenya. Of outer space. So here's another one. Words as containing power in themselves. The example was given a couple months back, for instance, of if you write bad words on, on a jar and stick them on them, whatever's in the jar will, will, will rot, whereas if you write good words on it, whatever's in, in the jar will not rot. That, so there's, there's kind of an idea there, which the example that I just gave is a little bit easy to disprove because you could just do the test at home and see that it doesn't work. But what about the idea that that, um, that that bad words can, in essence, bring about a curse on someone? Like, for instance, um, uh, someone getting cancer because they were negative or something like that. Sounds like witchcraft to me. Yeah. Sounds like Greek to me. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Hold on, Serena. I want to see if anybody else has it. Call. Zach. Baby. Crazy. Not words themselves. Okay, so like elaborate a little bit. Like, like okay, um, the way you speak to your kids, for instance, okay, is going to affect the way they grow up. 
okay. in which they have it themselves. But um, saying certain things like, like saying um, my kid will never get on drugs or something like that. Okay, you could say that over, but that's not going to make sure he never gets on drugs. What? That's what I've been doing solely as my only practice for my son. What the deuce? You're not alone. <laughs> Obama the aliens. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, another one which actually is has a very large following is that 9/11 was staged by the American government. I didn't think this, but but there are it, it was um, I, I forget either one in four or one in eight people believe that 9/11 was staged by the American government. There's even a welder that tried to prove that uh, Bobby Peel can't win the medal. He he tried to prove it, proved his point, but still didn't make any sense towards whether it was staged or not. Right. <laughs> See what I mean? And, and a lot of cons some conspiracy theories are just plain dumb. But some actually do have a little bit of like, hmm, that's something. And you can't really like, like there's another one that goes along with the 9-11 one that says that we basically just wanted to take uh, the Middle East oil. So we went to war. I mean, and that I guess that's possible too. You know See what I mean? Like some, some conspiracy theories have a little more basis than other ones, but... Ultimately, there's some that we'll never know. Mm -hmm. Terrible as that. Um, so, yeah. So, that brings up the question, is it a baseless claim or a theory with speckled proof? Because a lot of times, a conspiracy theory will have nuggets of truth in them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, the whole ridiculous one that President Obama is a half alien. Like, they'll take little things about it. Like, for instance... Ben, have you ever seen an x-ray of his body? Well, well, no, I haven't. <laughs> See? See what I mean? And they'll just take little things of proof like that. And it's just like, wow, you made some wild conclusions with that little bit of evidence. But anybody have anything anything to add to this? Any questions? Any interesting theories that you've heard? I, one I've heard is that Hitler was the Antichrist. How'd that I've work that out? that one a lot. How, how'd, uh, how'd that one work out so for him? I've heard the Antichrist, right? I thought it was the Pope. Man, I'm way behind. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody's the Antichrist. Okay, so are we ready to move on then? Nobody else heard any interesting conspiracy theories that are just are funny? No? We can't think of it now. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. So how do you separate conspiracy theories from reality? Because a lot of a lot of times, even Christians are um, get a little bit um, blindsided, and if you try to explain it to them, like, well, maybe you're being a little bit too weird, um, they just kind of no, you're just not a believer. See what I mean? And so not just non Christians are, are are get sucked into this. Christians do too. So how do you separate that? And try to be understanding for the people who do get wrapped up in conspiracy theories. Well, like I said, I think that you need to weigh the facts okay. in favor of the conspiracy or that oppose the conspiracy. And, you know, everybody has their own opinion and you're going to lean a certain way. No. You know, so I think you just have to kind of weigh the facts against each other and see. I know what you mean, because like the whole Obama alien thing, I didn't want to believe I did not it. Feel good. And then it turns out that it's true, so I had to believe. Just <laughs> hey, but seriously, did you see that there's a, a, a handout over there with a the pen if you want it? Sorry, going back to the topic. Hi. 
Going back to the topic. Anybody else? Then I know you got something. With how much we've talked about conspiracy theories, no way are you being this quiet about this. Mm. Chuck, you're guilty of the same thing right now. <laughs> well, I normally like to slap him upside the head or shake him around. <laughs> <laughs> thought, that's a thought. It's a thought. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll just move on then. Um, carefully consider the facts, which is what multiple people have um, have talked about so far. Like, um, I guess one thing that kind of goes hand in hand with this is is kind of be slow to believe in something. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about like God's promises and that kind of stuff. I'm talking about when you hear something new. You know what I mean? Like that you've never heard before, like. President Obama is a half alien, for instance. Just be slow to believe it. You can't instantly receive something into your inner being just simply because somebody said it, even if it's something that you like. Like, I really don't like President Obama, and I wish he was an alien. Well, lo and behold, this person claims that he is an alien. That's so cohesive with my viewpoint. So, I mean, be, be slow to kind of kind of believe these things. Uh, and what makes it worse is I, a lot of times um, guest speakers to churches will come in and they'll say these things and, and they'll say all these good things but then they'll just say one or two things just kind of like, mm. you know what I mean? And uh, it's just kind of borders on conspiracy theory but it's just kind of like, well, just kind of take the good and leave behind the bad. And w what gets confusing is uh, when you have to shift through the bad and find that little itty bitty piece of good and it's like, oh, Thank God for that little nugget. I'm gonna stick that in my front pocket. <laughs> Obama, okay. President, okay. Half, yes. Alien, all. <laughs> okay, so carefully consider the facts. Second, separate the natural and observable from spiritual and unobservable. Okay. If you can do the um, scientific method on it, do it. By all means, do it. However, there's some things in the spiritual realm that you can do the scientific method on. For instance, the demonic realm. You can't really put that in a test tube. You know what I mean? But then there are other things that you can put in a test tube. And it's just like, well, let's kind of be slow to believe these crazy, wild speculations. Um, so, like, for instance, aliens. Can, do we have any physical proof of aliens actually existing? Well, the truth is no. We have some stuff that we could bend into saying that aliens existed or exist, but as far as solid evidence that we have, that we can examine, no, we do not have that right now. Um, so, That's because the hiding it from us. <laughs> she said that's so serious. <laughs> Analyze every theory by itself. Whenever you hear a theory, just kind of take it apart. Think about it for a few days. Take it apart. Take apart. Take apart the, the parts that make that up. You know what I mean? Like nobody just says President Obama is a half alien. There's always like these these little things that, that are stepping stones to get them to such a wild conclusion. You know what I mean? And so when you hear a new theory, kind of analyze how they got to that point, and see if the basis for that. See what I mean? Well, in order to believe that President Obama is a half alien, you have to believe that. There are aliens. You have to believe that aliens can appear to be human. You have you have to believe that um, um, the, the the scientific um, way of looking at things is almost never right. So I mean, you have to throw out a lot of things that you don't have to to get by in life. You know what I mean? Like scientific method is a good thing. Michael approved. See what I mean? <laughs> but anyways, so just analyze analyze the theory. Um, is it rooted in solid thinking? I believe Serena. Somebody said this about. Was it Gracie? Okay. Somebody was talking about this about you know just the idea behind it. Does it sound reasonable? Does it sound like something that could be true? You know what I mean? Because some people, I mean, they're just crazy. But then they come out with these ideas, and you're just like, wow, that idea is actually crazier than you are. And uh, and uh, so just like look at the theory itself. Is it something that is based on solid thinking? You know what I mean? Like. 
is it so crazy to believe that a celebrity would fake their death? Well, no, I guess that isn't so crazy to believe. But, I mean, why would, oh, let's say, for instance, um, Elvis Presley, why would he fake his death? Like, was he in, in debt or something? Like, what, what is his motivation here? Did he just not enjoy the, the fame? See what I mean? Like, Maybe what is it? Much. See what I mean? Like, 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 what? Why would he? Why would he do such a thing? And is there substantial proof? I mean, we have the body, and I mean, <laughs> seems like pretty open and shut case. Yes, technically he could have like paid off the what are they called? The people who do the body um, mortician. He could have paid off the mortician. He could have paid off the cops. And it's like that's a little much. I mean, it could have happened, I guess. But without sufficient evidence, like Serena was saying, you, you can't really say, I'm going to take all this evidence that, that appears to be reasonable, and I'm going to throw it out the window, and I'm just going to believe this shred of possibility. That, see what I mean? So, um, okay. Beware of spiritualizing. This is where you say, oh, God revealed it to me. President Obama is a half alien. I woke up at 3 in the morning, and I was, I was praying, and I hadn't eaten for 7 days, and... Hadn't drank any water either, and I was drinking a lot of energy drinks. And uh, lo and behold, I uh, God spoke to me in this dream. And it's like, okay, whoa, let's reel it back there. You know what I mean? Um, beware. Beware of that. Um, usually if God wants to reveal something, he uses ordinary methods rather than supernatural methods. I mean, yes, he can use supernatural methods, but he doesn't do that all the time. You know what I mean? On, on, on happy juice. <laughs> um, and, and you know the error of this means that um, basically where you take something and um, like for instance in the Old Testament, um, I've shared this before, but like you know it says about um, the tent and the, putting up the tents and, and the thing. Well, tents you have to have pegs to put up a tent. Tents usually have four pegs. The four pegs must mean it's like whoa. See what I mean? That's an example of <laughs> this must mean that, and it's the same. People do the same thing with extra biblical stuff, like um, the whole thing with Elvis Presley. The, this little bit of evidence must mean wild conclusion that he's still alive. Based off this little bit of stuff, you know what I mean? Well, this could also mean that over there too. You know what I mean? Like um, we we've done we've done studies on the Earth, and we can we can prove without a doubt. That um, people evolved from from apes. Well, that could mean that, or you could take that same evidence and say something else, like there were other creatures who have died off that were very closely related to humans. That humans have evolved in a sense to be taller or to be a little bit different than they were before. It doesn't mean that they were not humans. It just means that you know what I mean. You see what I'm saying? It, just because you have a little bit of evidence doesn't mean you have to come to a rash conclusion. You can you can take that evidence and you can just think about it for a while without having the immediate answers. It's okay. Just think about it for a minute. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to say about this? Um, and then some people go on this thing about I'm so spiritual I just know. I just have all the answers and I just I just know. Um, and and how where do you get these answers? I just know. It's like okay I'm sorry I did not mean to contradict my Lord. You know what I mean? Like, you know, some people get kind of weird. Or um, a lot of people, going hand in hand with what I just said, have to find some deeper meaning. You know what I mean? Like, nothing can ever be just simply that. It always has to be something far grander and greater. Like, um, in the Old Testament, why do they have to have animal sacrifices? Because animals represent people and their lower beings before they transcend to a human form, which is before they also transcend into gods. So it's just like, wait, what? So, I mean, things don't always have to be some deeper meaning. Sometimes things are just how they are. You know what I mean? Like, when we take the scientific method and examine things scientifically, under a microscope, that doesn't mean that, 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 we're, that we're not worshiping God. That, that means God created a physical world, and we're using our physical senses to analyze that physical world. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. We're not saying that the physical world is all that exists. We're just simply saying that God gave us physical tools to look at that physical world. Does that make sense? So, um, so is it credible? Search for the truth. Uh, Gracie, Gracie already mentioned this. You know, are, are these are these people are seeing these things as credible? Uh, going back to, for instance, the thing with Hillary Clinton. Um, this is is something that I'm actually kind of surprised about because the thing with Hillary Clinton actually isn't a conspiracy theory. 
It's only a conspiracy theory if there is no data to prove, it, uh, to, prove to prove the point. But there is data to prove the point that she lied about the emails. Fact. She could have done something with, for the people in Benghazi. Fact. See, what I mean, she she lied these different things. Fact. I mean, you go through her career and you see these these things that are constant cover up after cover up, and people being paid off after people being paid off. The FBI even said. Yeah, she has done these things. We're just not going to charge her for it. But then he goes, went on to say that, let me be clear, if somebody else does it, he didn't say it like this, but let me be clear, if somebody else did this, they would be charged. Like, for instance, what was that one? Um, what was her name? Um, she had that cooking show and also home oh, show. Martha Stewart? Um, yes, Martha Stewart. Oh, Martha Stewart. You remember what she did? Do you guys remember um, Nixon? What was his name? Um, President Nixon. Uh, Richard Nixon. Do you guys remember what, what President Richard Nixon did that got him kicked out of office? Yeah, he deleted a few minutes of recording. That's small stuff compared to what Hillary Clinton has done. <laughs> See what I mean? And what has changed between Nixon and Clinton? Like, what has changed? <laughs> it's not some... What? The Antichrist. Um, See so you know what I mean? Like, we've taken stuff that, and called it a conspiracy theory, but that's not actually a conspiracy theory. That's... That's something that is, is a fact. That's corruption, not conspiracy theory. Elvis Presley, that would be a conspiracy theory. Right. President Obama being an alien, there is a conspiracy theory. But it's not a conspiracy theory if there's actually facts and data to, to prove that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um, I hope you guys understand the difference. Any questions on that? Okay. So just some just some considerations uh, for for looking at anything when you're dealing with conspiracy theories or that kind of stuff. Belief or knowledge in something does not change the truth of something. For instance, regardless of whether you believe in demons or not, that doesn't change what a Ouija board is. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have said, um, people I'm actually related to, well, it's okay because we didn't know that when we bought the Ouija board it was bad. Once again, ignorance of something does not mean that that changes the nature of something. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, I made I made a deal with the devil, but I didn't know that that, that the devil wouldn't wouldn't save me. See what I mean? Like <laughs> that that doesn't really make sense. Um, belief or the knowledge in something does not change the truth of what that something is. The more power you give to the satanic, the more you will find it. Okay. Uh, for instance, a lot of people are spiritually paranoid in the sense of they see Satan everywhere. So then they see, see like a horror movie, which is just completely stupid at its core. Um, like, oh my gosh, there's this one uh, with Nicolas Cage that, that Brittany, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, but it's called Pay the Ghost, and it is just a terribly stupid movie. Oh my gosh, it's so stupid. But let's say I was inclined to believe d these demonic fancies, like beyond what the Bible says. I mean, seeing demons everywhere. Um, it would probably um, mean something more to me than it did because I have a bit, I have an understanding of demons based off of this, not off of Hollywood. See what I mean? That kind of makes sense. So, um, the more power you give to the satanic, the more you will find it in things, you know, movies and stuff, and, and the more you'll grow fearful of it. Um, I was actually talking to somebody who had done this very same thing, and they are still watching horror movies, but. Um, they're, they're seeing demons everywhere on the fact of, you know, um, good example. Um, the Michael Lewis Smith album where, where the words are written backwards and I must be satanic. See what I mean? So then all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, the devil, and they have to burn the CD. You know what I mean? Um, where, where they see it literally everywhere. And, and th that's what people don't understand. The more you, you give, the more power you give to the satanic, the more you're going to find it in things. See what I mean? Like, let's say, for instance, I, I, I mess around with the Ouija board. Well, then I'm going to, you know, let's say, see the devil in, in shapes at night coming through the window. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because my, my, my conscience is already going to be, plus, Satan takes every inch that he can. If he sees a spirit, you know, um, I don't want to say a spirit of fear, but if he sees fear in you, he'll play off that. Right. See what I mean? The demonic realm doesn't know what you're thinking. However, they do observe what's going on, and they can see. They're not, they're not stupid. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Um, and so they can use what they observe against, against you, exactly. Um, so, if you are looking for signs, you will find them. I mean, I can't, 
I can't elaborate on this enough. If, if you are looking for something to be true, you're going to find it. Like, for instance, God, if you want me to date this person, let, let this sign happen. So then you go driving around town just looking for that sign. And you miss 15 different examples of God of, of that sign not coming true. And then the instant you see one fragment of that sign happening, sign from God. See what I mean? And it's just like, well, maybe you came to the conclusion that you wanted to date that person before you actually asked God. Or maybe you expected God to shine a light down from above rather than reading his word and seeing if this person conforms to what God has in store for you. See what I mean? Um, and a lot of times people just kind of do that kind of stuff. And I'm not just talking about re with relationships. I'm talking about uh, life in general. You know, We get kind of this preconceived bias of, of what we want out of the world. And, and then every time we, we, we look for these excuses to back up that idea. You know what I mean? Um, God, should I move? If you want me to move, let there be a sign. Four months later, on the news, something happens in Albuquerque. Albuquerque. See? See? God answered. No, you were looking for a sign. So the instant something remotely was a sign, you interpreted it as a sign. See what I mean? God very rarely freaks, speak, speaks through signs. Let me just put it like that. I'm like this, in this way. He speaks through signs, but not these kinds of signs. Some things go beyond right and wrong, but is it foolish or or, un, or, or wise? Like, for instance, the thing about um, – uh, we were talking about the Buddha idol, remember? And regardless of in the future, I'm talking about here and now. We were talking about it, it being wrong because of this, that, and the other thing. I want to move past that. Let's say it doesn't matter if it's right and wrong, okay? Let's let's look at it some, from something, some, something from a different perspective. Is it wise to do that thing? And I'm, I'm not talking specifically about the Buddha idol. I'm talking about – in different things in our lives, we kind of we kind of do stuff based off of is it right and wrong rather than should I do this and is it wise for me to do this thing? You know what I mean? Like um, I know one guy who said, okay, well I want to see what these people are talking about with pot and I want to see if it's going to make me lazy. So I'm going to do pot. Okay, see what I mean? It's not about whether it's right or wrong for you to do the pot. It's about is it smart. Is that a wise thing for you to do? Well, no, it wasn't a wise thing. Furthermore, he only did pot long enough to... Let me put it like this. Pot smokers kind of change over the course of doing it for one week and doing it for a year. You know what I mean? And he only did it for long enough to know what it was like to be high from pot, not long enough to let it change his mind. See what I mean? I mean, it's the same thing for alcohol. You drink alcohol, you might get drunk once, and it, you might still reason and think like you would normally the next day. But then over the course of becoming an alcoholic, you start looking at things differently. You start understanding things differently, and, and, and you start feeling different about things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. So for the, for the sake of, of conspiracy theories, I want to move past something being right and wrong and something being foolish or wise. Is it a wise thing to invest your time in conspiracy theories like about President Obama or about this or that or other thing rather than focusing your attention on biblical studies or about seeking the Lord or about witnessing to people? Is that a wise thing? See what I mean? Do you think your time is better invested looking up conspiracy theories or growing in the knowledge of the Lord? See what I mean? There's sometimes when, when you when you can't ask yourself is it right and wrong you have to look at it from the Bible and say, but is this a wise thing that I'm doing? Okay, and also just as a final note on this, avoid extremism. Usually when people go to the extremes on something, it's going to be wrong. You know what I mean? Like I can't even give examples of this right now just because there's there's some things that I can't talk about, but. Oh my goodness. Some people just go to the extreme on stuff and, and oh my goodness. Let me let me ask you guys, do you guys have any um, stories that are not currently going on right now um, about people taking things to the extreme in in, 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 in Christianity? They believe that this guy, he, this guy was being erased by Jesus, and uh, so he's dead, of course. 
and they kept him in the house for like a week. And uh, finally, the police had to uh, break down the door and um, force him force him to let them have the body because uh, it was rotting. It was nasty. That's gross. That's a really gross thing to do. Yeah. So I guess that would be kind of an extreme thinking that mm -hmm. Jesus, you know, raised people from the dead on different occasions, and it's not going to yeah. be every occasion God's not going to raise someone from the dead. There's one I can talk about. Um, when, when people are praying for healing and they say, okay, so Jesus healed in, in the New Testament, it says to pray for healing, therefore, every time that we pray, God is going to heal. See what I mean? A lot of times, and, this is, and I'm using that to kind of springboard into conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories are often rooted in this extremism mentality. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, words don't just simply have meaning. They all of a sudden have ultra meaning. Where if you say bad words like death and despair, <laughs> why you guys are all going to have cancer now. Oh, I said cancer too. That means you guys are really going to be in for it now. Wake up with headaches and all this stuff. So, I mean, you don't have to take things to the extremes on stuff. You know what I mean? And so really the first, the first sign of a conspiracy theory is usually extremism. Usually it's not something that's based in possibility. It's usually based in... There's a slight evidence that this might exist, so we're going to say that it does exist. For instance, this guy that I knew when, when he was a kid, he used to cuss a lot, and now he died of cancer. Well, now, hold on. See what I mean? Like, I know a lot of other people, nice people who died of cancer. What about babies who die of cancer before they can even talk? Well, their parents were... Do, do, do. do you not remember the story in the Gospels where, where, the, where he, they say to Jesus, was it because of their sin or because of their parents' sin that he's like this? He says, neither. See what I mean? What about Job where they're saying, is it... Uh, you, you're, you're in this place, Job, because you did this or because you did this or because you did this. And God says, he didn't do any of those things. I just put him through testing. End of story. See what I mean? <laughs> like... <laughs> A good example. Um, so just avoid extremism on this stuff. Um, so there's this kind of this um, spectrum. On this side, you have wild speculation, drawing conclusions based on little to no evidence. But in the middle, you have unproven theory, the, the, the realm of a possibility. There, there's a slight possibility. Um, like the only one I can think of right now... Okay, who has seen Sherlock Holmes by BBC? Okay, have you guys? Oh, not everybody here has seen that, and that's a spoiler. Um, okay. <laughs> Dagum. <sighs> Let me think of something else. Um, okay. Well, there is a show. I think it's Mentalist or something like that where this person fakes their death and they do it by um, changing changing their records with what, with what the police had in their data banks. See what I mean? And then they just put the body that they matched that to in, in the car and burn the car. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that way it showed up that it was them in the fire. See what I mean? So that would be a good example of unprovable theory. I don't think this was this guy. But I can't prove it because the records say it was this guy. See what I mean? Unprovable theory that it could work, it could not, just kind of in the middle there. But then usually things aren't aren't in the middle. They're either to the wild speculation or the fact. So I mean, in, in real life, that's usually how it is. Um, and so that's your little spectrum. So some examples is President Obama, alien. We already talked about that. Was 9/11? We already talked about that. Is non-satanic in origin? Now see this. This sounds like it's an unprovable theory, except for if you know Satanism. Then all of a sudden you start seeing that everything is, I mean, it's its the theory, the, 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 the satanic belief, put into a movie. See what I mean? That's not really so much unprovable theory as, as maybe there was a chance that he had no idea about Satanism and it just lined up that all of these symbolic things actually were about Satanism. But usually there aren't that many coincidences. So, um, can words literally bring about death in a way, I guess? Like, for instance, Proverbs talks about, you know, um, a joyful heart, you know, breaking life and all these different things. And it's not talking literally. It's talking about the way that 
when your spirit is distraught within you, like, literally, you waste away, you know what I mean? Like, you just don't feel well, you don't feel like getting out of bed, you, you don't feel like um, doing anything that day. Whereas when somebody comes and says a good word to you, they say something nice to you, it just encourages you, you know what I mean? And you go out and you, and you see the sun and you feel the wind and it just does something, you know what I mean? But I'm not taking it to that weird level of, of you know, don't say any word that could possibly t be interpreted in a negative sense lest you get curses heaped on you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm washed by the blood of Christ. I don't have to worry about those things, you know what I mean? Um, but once again, where you expect, where you where you give power to the satanic, you're going to find it. So, um, do curses exist? In a way, in a way. The Old Testament, for instance, talks about how God would put a curse on them if they did this or a blessing on them if they did that. So in a way they exist. But and, and sometimes, you know, they, the satanic can, can do things. But keep in mind that some curses can't exist. Like, for instance, just because someone jinxes you or something like that doesn't mean that as a Christian you're going to suddenly die. It could happen, I suppose, but, I mean... Let's not put too much stock in that. So, I mean, don't don't be overcome by the worry and the fear of these different things like curses and stuff. Just you know, Hollywood plays with them a lot, and and the satanic realm deals with them a lot. Just don't worry about that kind of stuff. If you're seeking after the Lord, anyways, you don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? Um, and then our generational curses drill. This is actually a conversation that I had just a few weeks ago with somebody. Um, and. Yes, in the Old Testament there was the idea of, of generational curses, and there is still the kind of, a kind of thing that exists with that today. My grandpa was an alcoholic, and my dad was an alcoholic, and my brother was an alcoholic. See what I mean? Al alcoholism runs in the family, you could say. So in that sense, generational curses kind of still exist. But keep in mind that when we are saved, Jesus frees us from that baggage. See what I mean? Um, and even if we still mess up, we just keep seeking him, and he just keeps forgiving us. See what I mean? I hope that this kind of brings some clarity in that. Um, the person I was talking to, basically, something had happened in their life, and, and these church people told them, you know, and told them about how this was all their fault because of some generational curse and, and nonsense, and it's just like, where did you get that from, bud? Like, it was just, it got dark. And um, eh. and these kinds of things chase people away from church. They ch it chases them away from fellowship with people. It chases them away from, from, from growth. Because you're looking at some, some far out there spiritual thing rather than rooting yourself in the Bible. You know what I mean? Where, where, does, where does Paul ever write, hey, let's worry about generational curses? How do, where does James ever write, hey, this is how you clear yourself of generational curses? In fact, if you remember in the Old Testament, the only reason where, where God would put a generational curse on someone is where, where people would directly rebel against him. And so he said, I'm going to put this curse on you. But when they repented and turned from, from it, he removed that. See what I mean? So let's kind of keep things in perspective here. Um can things be haunted? That really de depends on your, your, your definition. Demon the demonic can mess with things. You know what I mean? Like knock cups over and stuff. They can do stuff like that. Um, but they can't possess a cup. You know what I mean? They can possess animals and they can possess people. Now, once again, that takes us to a whole new discussion about what is possession, because the word possess doesn't exist in the New Testament. It says, has a demon. But that's a discussion for another, for another day. What is important is that the satanic can directly influence people and animals. However, there is really no biblical evidence of people who have their heart right with God long-term being affected by demons. There is the idea that they can be, you know, um, for lack of a better word, assaulted by demons. You know, where, where like, for instance, um, there's just this heavy presence that comes on you and tries to discourage you. And I'm not talking about depression. I'm talking about someone who doesn't struggle with depression and it's just this black mood that comes on them. That can be a demonic thing. 
See what I mean? that, that can be a demonic thing um, in Christians. But then also, um, some, sometimes Christians are, are faced with things like, for instance, Gracie was telling a story when they went to Mexico, Mexico, where they went to this heavily demonic place, and this girl was, was paralyzed. Uh, or, yeah, like it felt like they had the hands on her and she couldn't move. Yeah, and she, and she couldn't move. So, But she was saved. See what I mean? And sometimes the demonic can have a temporary overwhelming sense like that um, until you reach a place of growth in the Lord where you can, see what I mean? Because sometimes baby Christians try to go out there and do something like they're a, a fully adult Christian and it just doesn't work like that. See what I mean? Especially if you come from a background of, 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 of demonic influence, it, it takes time for you to grow to a point. You know what I mean? When you pop out a baby, can it instantly walk? No. It, it sits there and a lot, it can't even move its head. So you change this diaper and you feed it and you change this diaper and you feed it and you do that a hundred times and it finally can move its head. Then you do the same thing over and over again and finally it can spliff itself over. Then finally it can lift itself up like this. <laughs> and then you do it some more for, for a while and finally it can crawl and then finally it can walk and then finally it can talk. See what I mean? Stages. And it's the same thing with Christianity. You can't instantly, oh, I'm saved so I need to go start a fight with the demonic realm. It's like, what are you talking about? That's the stupidest thing you can do. You need to focus on seeking after the Lord and being used by him, and he will direct you, and he will keep you safe wherever he guides you. See what I mean? But this was a premature thing of taking somebody where they were not spiritually ready to go. See what I mean? And I don't even know if they had a correct doctrine of the demonic realm. See what I mean? And if you believe that the demonic can do something to you, a lot of times they will have more control because you give them more control subconsciously. See what I mean? Whereas if you have a firm understanding about the demonic and you know who you are in Christ and you know who God is, see what I mean? You won't give the demonic extra room. Does that make sense? And this all directly relates to directly relates to conspiracy theories because um, d the demonic realm loves confusion and it loves um, captivating people and it loves things that, that seem super powerful, which is why the Antichrist will, will, will show signs like that. He'll show things that seem to be from God because the demonic loves confusing people. It loves getting the glory on itself. Okay, And so a lot of times conspiracy theories will be the result of the demonic. You know what I mean? To try and, and stir people into confusion and to stir Christians into panic rather than in focusing on God. Which is, I think, one of the reasons why in, in the messages that have been given so much lately talk about, don't worry about the politics. Don't worry about all these different things. I've got, I've got it all under, under control. Seek me. Have you guys noticed that? It's like five different messages over the past couple weeks. So, I mean, I think God might want us not be too overly concerned with these conspiracy kind of ideas and, and get more focused on him. You know what I mean? So, um, how to be discerning. The first off, the working of the Holy Spirit. I cannot express enough how much the empowerment of the Holy Spirit does for us. And one of the things he does for us is the discernment, which Serena was actually talking about at the beginning of the lesson. And I think Zach did too. And maybe Gracie did. You know, about how it just doesn't feel right. The Holy Spirit brings things to you and he's like, eh, hold on, hold on. Not a good idea. And two, con uh, consistent and, and in-depth Bible study. Um, if you are rooted in the truth, you will not easily be cut down. I mean, there's no easy way to say it. Simpler way to say it, I should say. Um, Fact-checking. Oh my goodness, yes. Whenever you hear conspiracy theory, do, do, quick, uh, do a quick fact-check. Have you guys ever heard of Snopes? Put that put that in your um, in your what's it called not browser history but where it's um, bookmark put that in your bookmark because you're gonna see some crazy things on Facebook and in, the half of them are not gonna be true like for instance have you guys seen the one about um, oh I just saw it again the other day um, Facebook is gonna start charging unless you post this thing right okay. that's been going around since I think I think Snopes said 2011. I want to say, that's a long time for people to still be believing it. But a quick check on Snopes shows it is not true. Another one is the RFID microchip thing. Yes, there are microchips that are in, are in existence that they're using with dogs and stuff, and there are some places that are testing them on people as well. However, the one that's mandatory that's shown on Facebook is not realistic because it's actually something for diabetes. <laughs> that's all it is, yes. That, mic that mandatory microchip is not in Obamacare, and it is not something that is actually going to happen in the, in the immediate future, at least 
they haven't told us so far. I don't even know for sure if, if the if the um, stuff exists. And here's another side note here. It might not, that might not even be the mark of the beast anyways. So don't worry too much about it. <laughs> Simple fact checking. And you know, I, I, I know all of you guys are gonna are gonna nod your head at this one. But in the in the future, you guys are gonna see something on Facebook and you're gonna be tempted to just think that it's true and you're gonna remember in the back of your head, conspiracy theories are just theories. Look up the facts. Okay? <laughs> If I see something dumb on y'all's Facebook, I'm going to snopes y'all about it. Okay, patient conclusions. This is what I said at the beginning. Be patient in your conclusions on what you believe. Be patient in believing it. Realize something cannot be proven or disproven, but um, realize some things cannot be proven or disproven, but are more or less likely. Serena said this, right? Um, so, it, yeah, it's not necessarily, oh, well, it's absolutely proven or it's absolutely disproven because that rarely happens. For instance, the whole Elvis Presley dying thing, we can't absolutely positively prove that unless we were there and saw him die, can we? See what I mean? There's always that little shred of possibility that, that it didn't actually happen. But more or less likely. It's more likely that he died than he didn't die. See what I mean? It just seems a little bit less likely that he wouldn't actually still be alive. Even if he did fake his suicide, he'd, um, yeah, he'd be dead now anyways because of how old he'd be. Just throwing it out there. You can't do drugs like he did for as long as he did and just expect your body to keep kicking. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> Except people you don't agree with. Ooh, this one's hard for me. Because I hear some of them say something stupid and I'm just like, What? I don't want to talk to you much anymore. But the truth is we have to be accepting of people. We don't have to accept their beliefs. Okay? But you do have to tolerate them as a person because Jesus tolerates them as a person. And in each of us, there's a little little part of us that's stupid. A little part of us that's stupid. Somewhere. There's somewhere in our heads that if we actually stop and think of it, that's a stupid thing that I believe that. You know what I mean? Um... I was talking to one person, you know, oh, I'm not racist, I'm not racist. But there was a little part of them that, that still did believe that white people and black people. See what I mean? In each of us, there's that little bit of stupidity somewhere in us that we're just blind to. Bono put it like this. There are some things in our culture that are accepted that, then, that won't be revealed that are wrong until the next culture. See what I mean? Or until the next generation. And he used the example of slavery. You know, they accepted it, but then there was a generation that came and said, hey, that's not right. Um, and so then this generation will probably be things that we say, hey, this is okay. And the next generation will say, eh, no, it's not. Yeah. See what I mean? So, accept people you don't agree with and realize that there will never be someone that you completely 100% agree with. Um, one of my relatives, you know who I'm talking about, has some crazy theories, crazy theories about Egypt and sacred writings and God knows what else. I mean, it really take on for a long time. It's just like, good God, I think I fell asleep and woke up five or six times now. But you have to accept them as a person, see what I mean, and realize that some things are just crazy things that people believe. And also sometimes people grow out of crazy theories. I mean, sometimes, not all the time. And I didn't say that, that, that whoever it is that, that you're thinking of that has crazy conspiracy theories is one day going to wake up and say, that's crazy. But sometimes people do grow out of that stuff. So let's look at just some different things that the Bible says about all this. Amos chapter 3, Bar Thavon. For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, his prophets. I mean, that's definitely something. The Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. And yes, I am ignoring the context. However, the principle does still carry through. That um, God's not going to do this great weird thing, you know, without revealing something. Israel was going to fall, so what did God do? He told his prophets, hey, Israel's going to fall, and this is why they're falling. See what I mean? um, Isaiah 8.12. Oops, I'm going the wrong way for that. Do not call conspiracy all, the, all that this people calls conspiracy, and do not fear what they fear, nor be in dread. 
And I like this one because it really gets to the root of a lot of times with conspiracy theories. People fear and they don't really know what to do with it, so they just kind of run wild with things. And what is it the pastor's always saying about not reading the word? You make stuff up. See what I mean? So, um, Philippians 4 6. Where am I going? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Um, 2 Timothy 1.7. For through the ling, oh, sorry. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So, um, any questions about uh, all this we talked about with this? What I want you to take away from this is this: we've talked about a lot of bad things. We've talked about cults. We've talked about uh, hidden messages in the media and all kinds of these different things. But for every truth, there's an anti-truth. And that would be conspiracy theories. Yes, there are hidden messages in media. But does that mean that everything is a hidden message? No, it does not mean that at all. See what I mean? Just because hidden messages do exist does not mean that that's all that does exist. See what I mean? And, and so remember to keep things in balance. Yes, there are conspiracy theories out there, and you don't need to be naive about things, but neither do you need to be paranoid or worried about things either. See what I mean? Think about things, be critical about it, observe, analyze. Yes, absolutely. But then realize that there's a point about between the knowable and the unknowable, and realize that there's a point between worrying and being productive. See what I mean? Because sometimes we just sit there worrying about these different things. And, and uh, I thought that was mine. Uh, sometimes we just sit around worrying about these different... Oh, somebody's sending you a book. Whoa, four. Just four? I was really hoping for a fifth. I mean, four is just so... Uh, five is nice and clean. Anyways, um, and so always keep in mind that there's balance in things. You know, I don't agree with Buddhism, but there's this principle in Buddhism that I think is very true. The middle way. Oftentimes things don't have to be da or da da da. Sometimes there's there's another way, not to the extremes. For instance, I'm not a Republican, but I'm not a Democrat either. I think they're both stupid. There's a middle way. You know what I mean? Just because I don't agree with either of those stupid people doesn't mean that I'm not American. See what I mean? You guys get what I'm saying? You don't have to go to extremes on things, but you don't have to be naive on things. You don't have to accept everything, but you don't have to have to try and be on some arrogant quest to to disprove the whole world you know what i mean just just be discerning and usually that works itself out see what i mean so no questions go ahead absolutely well i mean you kind of you you, you did say this but you know the bible and god leads us into all truth so why pursue truth in things that really don't matter like, does it matter if we prove whether 9-11 was the government? I thought you were going to say that President Obama was an alien. I was like, yes, it does matter! <laughs> yeah, well, does it matter? You know, we should be praying about everything, not mm -hmm. worrying about anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when we're constantly pursuing truth in these things, what benefit is that to us or to anybody else? Yeah. It's not helping us to grow, and it's not leading any. It, we're not leading other people into growth by yeah. pursuing conspiracy theories. We need to be pursuing God, and, and you know, He leads us into all truth. Whether these conspiracy theories are true or not, yeah. there's no consequence. What's important is the Bible, and the Bible is true. Yeah. And I think uh, it goes. I mean, I think really what what Serena is onto here is just so so true. Like. First Timothy, for instance, tells us to pray for our leaders. Well, if we're worrying about whether our leader is an alien or, or a human, we're, see what I mean? <laughs> we're already not fulfilling the word of God. <laughs> no, that's not what I was saying. But but you see how Serena, what Serena was just saying ties into that. You have distracted yourself from what the word of God does say for something that is not even provable. See what I mean? Great, great, great comment there, Serena.